Just a quick demo of the uh, the jog controller that I'm working on. So I've got a, um, I think this is a 600 pulse per revolution encoder. So that's giving me 2400 pulses per revolution signal. Um, I've got a NEMA 24. I've got uh, an STM32 that's listening to the uh, encoder. <laughs> got lots of wires. I got a, a Trinamic uh, 2208, I think that is. And then here's the ESP32. And then I just have some buttons for various controls. And then um, here I have a little display. So it's a little jumpy, but it's better than my last attempt. Now this is using, or it's attempting to use the acceleration of the stepper motor. So you may not, you may barely be able to see it. Um, but it's it's moving, you know, a hundredth of a millimeter at a time at, at this point. And then if I go faster. You see it pick up, and if I stop moving, it stops, but not always. So if it's up to full chooch, it doesn't really stop, because what happens is gerbil cues up a whole bunch of the commands, and, um, you know, I think I, think I need to actually uh, rewrite some of the command parsing from gerbil. It, it gives you the... Uh, the buffer depth, the command buffer depth, and the number of blocks and the number of bytes in the receive buffer on the um, on the the uh, the ESP32 over here, and then I can actually use that to figure out when you know how how frequently I want to send commands. Um, now, if you look at the display, I don't know if I can get these both in the shot without disconnecting all my wires. Yeah, this phone has a terrible time focusing on just these OLED displays, but um, you can see that the uh, I have to get up to a certain acceleration before it starts moving. But once once I do, you can see the y-axis right here. Um, once I do it, it's pretty controllable. At the slow speeds, and then you'll see this 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 number right here. So that's my step size. Uh, the default step size is actually 0.2, but it's I've got it tuned down so f fine it goes much lower than that. It goes down to like 0.1 millimeter steps. Um, and then when I crank it up, it maxes out at two. So yeah, I mean there's a uh, there's a decent amount of work to be done. Um, again, I got to parse out the command buffer, and uh, I'm not sure what the best way to smooth this out is. I mean, if I just issue, if I just issued the 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 jog commands or the move commands at a steady rate, this would this would be quite a lot smoother. Um, but because it's so hard to spin this encoder wheel at a constant rate, it it translates pretty directly to the uh, to the motor control. So, like, even when I when I rotate it, sometimes when I pull my finger off, it actually pulls the the encoder wheel back, and you can see that it'll it'll sometimes go back the other way because just lifting your finger off the encoder doesn't make it work. So, you know, one of the things I think I want to do with this encoder is is put some kind of a detent on it so that. Uh, it gives a it gives a it gives a positive lock, and it gives a kind of a clicky feel, kind of like you would get with a with a regular mechanical rotary encoder. This is optical, so the really nice thing about this is you don't have to worry about debouncing, and it'll pretty much go as fast as you want it to go with this STM32, and I can hook three of them up to this one STM32. So yeah, I think I've been rambling. And uh, it's probably enough. So thanks for watching.